Think Pair Share is one of the most versatile teaching techniques. I probably use it in about 90% of my classes. I can use it at the beginning, the middle, the end. Uh, it's really great. It's an active learning technique that is sectioned off into three different parts. The think part, the pair part, and the share part. So in the think part, you provide a question or a problem uh, or an activity that each student does individually. After they've completed that activity, you give them maybe a minute or two, um, up to five to ten minutes, to complete the activity. They then pair off. You can either pair them off or they can pair off themselves. During that pairing, they reflect on, they sort of tell their partner about what happened during that activity, what they feel like they learned. Maybe you provide some questions that they should uh, discuss between each other to sort of structure the conversation. But they converse. After they've done that, hopefully there's some things that are, are, are happening during this pairing part, and you can ask some reflection questions about that experience and what happened within that in the share part. They share it out to the entire group. You can emphasize different parts of these of think, pair, share, but it is really versatile. And we're going to talk a lot about how it can interact with a lot of the other, other uh, teaching techniques that we're talking here, but it's super great. As I mentioned before, you can use think, pair, share at any time during the class. Basically, any time when you are trying to integrate a new concept into a, to modifying your skills or behavior, or you're reflecting on a new discovery that you just made. If you think about what our library instruction sessions are, that's basically all that we're doing. So anytime you introduce new concepts, a new database, something else like that, this activity is going to work really well to have them reflect and actually integrate it into their practice uh, and consider what the, the implication of that integration into their practice actually mean. Uh, so I can use it anytime. So at the beginning of a class, it's a really great warm-up to have them consider. Classic example, I might say, write down three sentences about your topic and then share them with your partner. Uh, that's a quick th think, pair, share. It also gets them in the mindset of thinking about uh, what their topic is and how they're going to research it. And it can also be useful at the end of class. You can say, find an article, summarize that article, and then t tell your partner about it, and then share it out to the entire group. Also a really great a learning activity, and what's really great is you can watch them do either one of those things and sort of get some insight into how they're actually going through that. What are those conversations sounding like? Are those the conversations that you intended them to have? Or do you are you noticing some things that, oh man, I need to go back and really sort of focus in on this sort of thing because I think this looks like a big block in their conversation. It's useful as you as an instructor. It doesn't mean when you are doing think, pair, share that you just stop and let them do the work. You're actively listening. Uh, and you're creating, you're, you're listening for things and clues on what you should be focusing in on with the rest of your instruction. Making it work for your instruction is obviously very context specific and actually personally uh, specific. But if we think about splitting each of these stages up, there are some things that you can do to make it a little bit more effective for your, uh, for your particular situation. So let's think about the think part. I usually try to have what I'm going to have them think about written down word for word and exactly. I'll, oftentimes I'll write it on the board so they don't have to remember that. They can look back up onto the board and sort of say, okay, this is what I should be thinking about. Maybe there's two or three questions. I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on how I'm answering that one question and I forgot the other two. They don't have to ask you again. They can look back up to the board uh, or they can have it on a work uh, handout or something like that. Uh, so that's a lot of what, I, what I'm doing within the think part. Or I'll give them a specific sort of thing uh, that they know that they'll be done. When they find one article and they summarize it with these three questions, that's perfect. The pair part. I like to actually say find a person that's next to you and point to them and that's your partner. Um, you can also have them count off one, two, one, two, one, two, and then sort of pair that ones, goes with, go, ones go with twos. Basically, with the pair part, um, if they have some established groups, use those groups already. I'm trying to make the little, the littlest impact possible. There can be a lot of administrative stuff that goes in with actually pairing. I try to take the burden off of them by providing them with their partner. Really, the biggest part uh, is that they're talking about their their topic with their partner, not who their actual partner is. The other part with the pair part is I often structure sometimes, if I feel like this is going to be a tough conversation to have or that they need some structure, I'll give them the questions that they consider. You know, as a, as I want you to ask your partner this particular question, uh, and I, you sort of go back and forth. A, ask B, this particular question, B, ask A, that particular question, you listen to the response. It structures the conversation so that when you pair them off and say, talk about this thing, they are not just like, uh, I don't know what I'm supposed to say. They have a question that's really, uh, that leads them into that sort of uh, uh, conversation. It makes it a little bit more efficient. Uh, the share part. The share part's really great because Oftentimes, I'm at, I will not ask them, what did you come up with? I'll ask them, what happened in your group? And they are experts at what actually happens in their group. 
they may feel a little self-conscious about sharing if they have the right or wrong answer, but if they but they know what happened in their group and they can talk about what that what, what's going on there. Uh, oftentimes with the share part, I'm trying to reflect and ask them different things, asking questions like. Did anybody else have a similar sort of experience? Did someone else have a different experience or approach it very differently? Uh, those can be topics for conversation and can really help a group discussion to sort of go off. So when you're integrating into your uh, instruction, think about what you want out of out of the out of the activity, and it might have you emphasize different parts of this. For some, it might be that I'll ha not have them think at all. They'll think while they're paired. I'm going to give them a group project to do that. So you do think and pair at the same time. You might say, you know what, the share part doesn't really work for me. I'm not even going to do it. I'm just going to have them think and pair, and that's going to be the way that I go within that. Um, it is really useful and super versatile. Uh, it's a technique that you should definitely try. I think I find that, as, as, especially when you're first starting it, being as specific as you, as you possibly can be, writing down beforehand, I'm, I know what I'm going to try to ask the questions toward. It also helps you with your instruction because you'll know what question you're going to have them think about, and you'll know... Did I prepare them? Did I teach well enough that they can actually think about that question in a productive way? Uh, it's really good self-check for you. So that's how you would integrate it into your class. So as I mentioned before, uh, all of these things are going to be contextually bound. So I'm going to set up the scene for you, and then I'm going to explain a think-pair-share that I commonly use for uh, a pretty typical type of class. Um, so. Oftentimes you're going to get uh, instruction ses sessions that are going to come in for annotated bibliographies. This is a go-to for me, a good think-pair-share that I go to for something like that. So let's imagine that a class is looking to build an annotated bibliography, and I have decided at the end that they should be able to really find an article and then break it down and understand what its meaning is uh, to be able to really complete the annotated bibliography. I'm going to give this at the end of class after I've sort of covered some of uh, the concepts that I think are really relevant. And this is going to be an activity where we're going to close the class out. I might devote tw the last 20 minutes of class to doing just this thing. So what will I do? I'll give them an activity. For the think part, I'm going to say, find an article. And for that article, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to write down on a piece of paper or open up a word processor. It's claim, or what does it say? It's methodology. How does it support that claim? Or, and it's implication. Why does it matter? to your understanding and to the community's understanding, whether it's the scientific community or the scholarly community, whatever community we're talking about. Um, why does it matter to them? If they can do each one of these things, I know that they are able to complete that. Unfortunately, what I do also know is that I have very little chance in 20 minutes to be to, for them to complete it and then me to be able to talk to each one of them. But I can use the pair part of Think, Pair, Share to allow them to sort of become accountable and if they can do each one of those things in their pair groups, they're totally fine. If they struggle with one of these things, either finding the article or figuring out one of these sorts of things, it's a great place that they can raise their hand, ask me for uh, help, ask their partner for help, uh, or ask the course instructor for help. This becomes really great for that. At the very end of class, I might find, did anybody have trouble finding an article? What was the hardest part about that? How many, what was the weirdest methodology that you found? Uh, did anybody find an article that totally changed the way that you think about your topic, that it changed your understanding, or that really illuminated something brand new in the community that you didn't know about? Reflecting on each one of these specific parts uh, becomes really easy. And this is a classic example. So I would write each one of these things up on the board, uh, and then they become accountable. So the claim, and I often try to translate it into what question they're going to be asking. Uh, at, during the pair part, after this, I'll say, this gives them the structure for what they're supposed to talk about. So what you'll often hear in the pair groups is, okay, this is the article that I found, and this is kind of where I found it. Its claim is blank. Its methodology is blank. Its implication for me is blank. And it oftentimes those conversations will just sort of tar take off from there. It's the kindling that really has them start talking. By the end of the class, I'm usually having to rile everybody down and say, okay, I have a few things that I want to cover at the very end but it usually gives them enough to get started because the structure works really well. Um, I'll write this all on the board. Imagine if you, I didn't write it on the board, they'd have to be taking notes furiously. This becomes a little bit easier for them and they can focus in on it. Uh, I think this is a really good example. If you're teaching an annotated bibliography class, especially in the natural sciences actually, this becomes a, a go-to for me because it, if they can do this, imagine, this is the building blocks of their annotation. They've basically written an annotation, they just have put it into paragraph form, and they've got one already done. And that shows me, and shows the instructor, and more importantly shows them that they're totally capable of doing it.